I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today is the tagline that I start a lot of my videos with, and I always mean it. I always want you to learn something new in every one of my videos, but some days I especially mean it, and today is one of those days, and that's why I'm smiling so big. Uh, nothing makes me happier than to do some original piece of research, experimentation, dare I say, science and then discover some piece of information that I can share with you that changes the way you think about how things work. Today is one of those days. The topic of the day is batteries and high volt batteries specifically. A while back, I said, don't, I don't recommend high volt batteries because they don't last very long. Well, now that I've got my new fancy schmancy battery test machine, I thought it was time to revisit that, that assumption, that conclusion, and... Standard lithium batteries are charged to 4.2 volts per cell, but you can charge them to higher voltages if you're willing to accept an additional risk of fire, explosion, burning your house down. I'm not kidding. You probably shouldn't do it. In fact, somewhere out there, my lawyer is telling me to tell you not to do it. Do not charge your lipos to higher than 4.2 volts per cell ever. But the fact is a lot of people do it. And it's mostly racers who accept the risk of a fire in order to get just that little bit of extra performance. And overcharging batteries does improve their performance. The more volts you can cram into that pack, the more watts you can get out of it, the longer your flight time, the less voltage sag, the better the battery performs. So when people start, when, when companies started releasing high volt lithium batteries, I would say about two to two and a half years ago is when I first started seeing them on the market. There was a lot of interest. Everybody knew that overcharging lipos made them perform better. I just didn't think it was safe to do it. But high volts promised, oh, but you can do it and it's safe. And in fact, that, that was basically true. But there was a catch. I recommended high volt batteries on my channel way back when it was just a little channel and some months later I came back and I took back the recommendation not because the batteries didn't perform they do perform but because I was hearing so many reports of people with 20 25 cycles on a pack and it was puffy and dead and basically I heard too many reports of these batteries dying so there was a question of well are these high volts are they really anything different that makes it, cause you could kind of overcharge lipos anyway. So there was some question of whether these high volts were just high quality, regular lithium cells with a different sticker on them. And by overcharging them, you were damaging them and shortening their lifespan. When I got my battery test machine, I wanted to revisit this question because there are some new uh, high volt lipos out there. And I wondered if something was different. And so we're looking today at this, <laughs> we're looking today at this battery. Now this is a race tech high volt, 2,400 milliamp hour four cell. This, uh, the only reason, and guys, this is not a, my normal battery testing stuff. I did this just for me because I wanted to know the answer. So this battery was actually sent to me by race tech months ago. Uh, normally I buy my batteries blind. So, you know, take that for what it's worth. And I only tested one battery. So I don't have a whole bunch of other samples, but I just wanted to, I just wanted to find out the results. The first results I want to show you are these 20 amp discharges. Now I discharged the battery at 20 amps. And the reason I did that was because I thought that's, uh, you know, if you discharge the battery, at just like one or two amps, you're not really working it. So I wanted a discharge that would work the battery, but I didn't want to discharge like 80 amps that could like damage the battery. And I settled on 20 amps. It's a 2.4 amp hour pack. So we're at about 10 C discharge rate. And you can see here, I discharged it uh, something like 40 cycles. Okay. And what I wanted to see was, does the performance of the battery degrade over time? Now, bear in mind, I am charging it to 4.35 volts per cell. I'm overcharging it. It's a high volt. You're supposed to be able to, right? I'm overcharging it every time. And I, let's just see how the results were. Now, this here is the highest uh, milliamp hours that came out of the pack. And if I hover over it, I should be able to see uh, this is 2.29 
amp hours, uh, 2299 milliamp hours. So pretty close to its rated capacity. It's normal to see that you don't get 100% of the rated capacity. It's pretty close though. And this is the very first discharge here. The very first discharge was the largest one by far. And then we can see as we go down, here is discharge number five, where we got 2263. Now they all get a little cluttered up, but then down here at the bottom, we've got discharge number 36, which is close to the end. We've got 2166. So let's, let's throw out this first one, which seems to be abnormally high. At the top end, we've got 2263. Hang on. At the top end, we've got 2263, and at the bottom, we've got, the bottom one is a little low. Let's throw out the bottom one, too. Let's, let's take this cluster in the middle. We'll throw out the lowest and the highest. 38. Number 38 uh, was um, 2187. 2263 plus 2187 divided by 2. We got an average of 2225 milliamp hours. Uh, over di over 40 discharge cycles. And if we take that out of 2,400 milliamp hours, that is 92% of the pack's rated capacity. So what we can see here is that I think there was definitely some degradation in pack performance. We can see that the highest numbered ones, this is, you see the 05 there, and the 4, 8, 7. We can see that these are the high, the early ones. And as we get down to the lower discharge, we can see that these are the later ones. Although not always here's number 34 down at the bottom here's number 18 and 19 that's actually not that high up here's 30 but i think in general we can see that there's a trend that is there 12 17 it feels like there's a trend that there was a small reduction in the pack's performance in the number of milliamp hours that the pack would discharge. This usually would indicate that its internal resistance is going up very slightly and we're losing more energy as heat. Nevertheless, the, the reduction in performance over 40 discharge cycles only took us from about like 96% of capacity down to about like 94 two percent that's actually pretty freaking good there are some batteries that don't achieve 90 that achieve 92 percent of their rated capacity when they're brand new so this idea that by overcharging the pack we're severely damaging it and we're just reducing its capacity doesn't seem to hold true this is 40 cycles that's that's a fairly normal amount of degradation of capacity over a pack's life but i didn't stop here what I actually did was I would run nine 20 amp discharges and then on the 10th one I would do a 50 amp discharge and the idea was that maybe the battery would respond worse if it was stressed by a higher discharge. So here are just the 50 amp discharges uh, again over the life of the pack and let's see what we get. Now in the beginning we see we have far less uh, charge coming out of the battery 1439 milliamp hours here this one is the uh, the 11th pack so that's the first one let's see if there's a pattern 21 32 42 so we can see a clear uh, reduction in performance as the back gets older and around 40 cycles I stopped doing the 20 amp discharges because I could just see that there was a pattern there uh, that wasn't getting much worse and I started only doing the 50 amp discharges so here we can see that we get a, a, a very regular stepwise reduction in performance as the battery ages and it goes through more cycles and then here 44 43 here's 46 47 45 we can see 49, 48, and 50. We can see that each time we do one of these 50 amp discharges, and there was nothing in between there, so we just charge it up and discharge it. Each time we do one of these 50 amp discharges, the pack is degrading. It's just sort of crumbling right before our eyes, in a sense. We go from 1400, what was this one? Uh, 15 volts where's the milliamp hours 15 22 milliamp hours down to 1100 milliamp hours roughly and yeah so what we could take from this hold on we'll go back to the head camera the surprise for me in this testing was that simply charging the pack to 4.35 volts per cell, overcharging it, didn't seem to actually hurt its capacity, its performance very much. There was a little bit of reduction, but 
kind of what you would normally expect to see over 40 cycles of just any any sort of discharge. And we were discharging at 20 amps, which is not nothing. However, I don't think that the final conclusion changes for me because we see that in the 50 amp discharges, even over the course of only five or six discharge cycles, we see the performance of the battery dropping off right before our very eyes. And of course, when you're when you're working with a quadcopter, a 50 amp continuous discharge is asking a lot of any battery. We often go higher than 50 amps on our quads, but not for very long. If you watch your amp meter, you'll see you're, you're often dropping back down to 30 or 20 or 40 amps. So I'm not sure that this 100% reflects what's going on with quads, but it's not conclusive enough to get me to change my mind about high volts. High volts perform very well. And in fact, whenever I'm like, if I'm trying to do like a four minute freestyle edit, this is the pack I go to. This will get me through that three to four. Maybe if I baby it a little at the end, I can do a four minute freestyle song with this pack and come down without at about 3.7 volts per cell and, and be fine. But I don't think that the high volts are great for general purpose use because I still suspect that their longevity is not what I would really want it to be for general purpose recommendations. There you go. That is that's what I do with my spare time. This was not a, a, a test that I did on, you know, this is the test that I did for me, not for you guys, but I'm happy to share the results with you. Let me know what your experience has been. There are so many new high volt batteries out there. Um, Race Tech, of course, this is one. This is, a, I mean, this is a really good battery. It does a great job. I just, I'm not sure that it's going to last very long if you're continuously discharging it fast. Um, have you had any newer high volts that have actually lasted? Gosh, I mean, there's the Tattoo R-Line 1550 high volt, which some say is the best four cell battery you can buy today. <laughs> so let me know what your experience has been. Are they holding up? Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy flying. Happy science.